alibi, the Central Asian Shepherd. I think this lady must know what she's doing when she poses like this. Feared as one of the world's most powerful flock guardians. Some people say that he can take on any wolf and win. He has so much courage. He can live alone in the harsh and extreme mountains, surviving only for the love of those he protects, his flock and his master. Today, we meet a true Central Asian shepherd, one who has come from the deepest mountains of Central Asia. Will he be as courageous and powerful as stories tell? And does he have the power to take on and kill a wolf? Meet today's wolf killer, the real. Why is she saying it like that? Like they're going to put her in a cage, put him in a cage match with a fucking wolf. You know? Like, how are you going to find out if it's capable of murder? What's going on? Alibi, the Central Asian Shepherd. The Central Asian Shepherd, also known as the Alibi, is a courageous giant guardian breed for both flocks and property. The internet is awash with clips of this dog fearlessly fighting wolves, some winning and some also falling victim to the wolves' fearsome bite and strength. Its history is complicated. The ancestor of the Central Asian Shepherd originated in a geographical area between the Ural, Caspian Sea, Asia Minor and the northwest border of China. Some serve as livestock guardians, some protect their owners, and some are used for dog fighting, which That's insane how fucking tall this little shit is. Is a national tradition in many countries of that region. Previously on Animal Watch, we visited some smaller alibi who had been bred from fighting and guarding lines. We were unable to touch these dogs who had been purposely unsocialized in order to do their job efficiently. Today, we have been invited to meet a huge Central Asian Shepherd, one who looks more like the giant classic images we see on the internet. Tall, proud, and dignified. He is also human friendly, as long as his owners tell him we are friends. I wonder if he will give me a friendlier welcome than my previous alibi friends. Hello, everybody. Hi. Are you, doing, Alec? Are you okay? okay? Hi, gosh, what's this? <laughs> it's, a, it's our little alibi puppy, Lucky. Lucky! Oh you're boy. so lucky, you're so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness me, and who's this? So we've got his father here as well. He's a Central Asian Shepherd. Uh, he's mostly got a lot of Kazakhstan blood in him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's about, th he's about three and a half years old. He's this really one. big. Yeah. He's got he's a huge gross. head, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a big, he's a big boy compared to this one. Yeah, farm, yeah. All right, tell us how fucking, how much this dog weighs, you know? So I can pay while they're behind the top of the hour ad break, baby. That's right. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Ooh. This one will grow to that size, will it? Yeah, it'll potentially be bigger. I think it'll be probably be a bit yeah. bigger. Yeah. It'll be fair. Be a bit bigger. Who have we got over here? This is Lucky. Hello, Lucky. How are you? Good girl. Oh, that's sociable. Oh, so is she. She's very attached to the people she knows. But Good yeah. girl. Oh, that's Fucking great. mouth is you watering. You don't have to say hi to me if you don't want to. Wow, they're really big. I've got to say in the UK, they're very rare. And I think what's really important is to talk today about the differences between the alibi and a lot of other dogs that are out there. Their background, their history, and what a true type alibi is and what it means. Sargon was indeed beautiful to look at. And you could see the odd scar from the confrontations he must have had with the other male guardian dogs there. However, he was so lovely to me and so sweet, totally different to the previous alibis I had met. He did always have one eye on the surroundings though, and I was told that he would defend the livestock the boys at Savaski Kennels had on site, as well as being excellent to patrol the perimeter. Why no ear? I don't think they have ears. ...to fence. Like, I think that's just, their ears are weird. 
Or maybe they cut him, but I, I assume he's just got like weird ears. At one point, he met one of the dominant Kangals through the fence, and we saw a much sterner side to his personality. But despite his undercurrent of fierceness, he was a good. No, he has ears. They're not cropped. Kind and gentle dog. Near to Sargon was a beautiful little baby. Oh, never mind. It's not floofy like this dog's ears. Yeah, they probably clip him so they can be like better at. Yeah, they probably clip them so that they don't, um, so the other animals that like attack, you know, wolves or whatever, don't bite them off. The alibi called Lucky. I was told that he was called this due to him being the only survivor of the litter. Now he was absolutely gorgeous and I said that I was going to take him home with me. She, she does this every time and it's like, I love dogs so much. I kind of get what she's doing, but like the slow motion lick sesh is just a little off, you over know? Over and over again. He followed me around with such a calm and relaxed demeanor. You can see why they are wonderful with kids and family, as well as doing their job as Look a guardian dog. Look how big her paws are. Despite all of this cuteness, there Whoa, is a much darker and more serious side to the Central Asian Shepherd. He doesn't get his reputation for nothing. So I sat down with the Sabaski boys to chat further about the origins of this breed and how they are used in real life situations out with flocks in the mountains. Would and could a dog breed like this be a pet or should belly. he stick to working only? Well, I'm here today with this beautiful alibi. Isn't he beautiful? He's huge. His name is Sargon. He's a Central Asian Shepherd. He is from a breeder back in Russia, but his bloodline originates from Kazakhstan and from Turkmenistan. Don't make these dogs pets, man. What do you mean? These are like the most not pet dogs out there. They're working dogs and they're working. He's got a lot of working line in him, not much show line, but you can see that he's the right size for a dream shepherd, which is 70 to 80 centimeters in by the withers, which is the correct size. He's not too big, he's not too small. Before I was told that Alibi come in lots of specifications, the show line, working line, and then somebody said there was a fighting line too, right? The show line Alibis, you trace them back in the pedigree, you will see they originally were fighting dogs. Right. How heavy do they generally weigh a male? There's a big range. Average male could be like 50 to 70. One of the really famous large Alibis, he's about 130 kilos. That's on. huge. Yeah which is obviously a lot bigger than yeah. this. But I'll take him any day yeah. over a big dog. For us personally, we like to look at structure a lot. You can see our female, or uh, Lavan's female. Yeah. It's well, a lot more slender, a lot more built, uh, lean dog. When I met him... And for the regular, you can, you can have a dog like this anywhere, man. I mean, look at my situation with Kaya. Kaya is like a Tibetan Mastiff, Chow Chow, St. Bernard mix. She's massive. But she gets a lot of her energy out in the morning. It doesn't matter. Like, even if they're a working dog breed, as long as you know what the demands are. As long as you know what the demands are. You know you can't, that's a dangerous dog. There's no such thing as a dangerous dog, brother. That's just not true. Like, I'm sure there's, like, dogs that are... Um, I don't know. There, there's not like a genetic insanity with dogs. Yes, there is. Okay. Talking to a dude who had a 80 pound pit bull. Okay. The thing is, you just have to socialize the dog. That's it. You have to socialize the dog. As long as you socialize the dog, every dog, I think they might mean in the UK we have a dangerous dog legal definition. Yeah, it's dumb as fuck. Like, there are certain types of dogs that people get that they don't, like, train well, and they're powerful dogs, and then they, like, uh, end up attacking people, you know what I mean? It's just, it happens. And I do think that, I do think that it's, it's difficult. Some dogs are harder to train than others. Um, and overall, I think some dogs are harder to train than others. I'm going to take Maya's opinion on dogs over yours, honestly. Why? What does she say about dogs? 
But yeah, working breed dogs are you gotta you gotta run them. Overall, though, overall, as long as you know what the needs of the dog are, um, and you know, because some dogs need uh to get their energy out more. Uh, than others, you know, if you take them on a long walk, you know, as long as you get them tired, like, why do you guys think Kaya sleeps all day? Do you think it's because she is like, as her breed? No, she sleeps all day because in the morning she's running for like two hours straight, nonstop because she's a bum. No, because she's... <coughs> Genetics definitely do impact behavior and aggression with dogs. I received a shoot dog from Vietnam as a puppy, and I still have him now in L.A., but he can't be touched by strangers, but socialized very well as a pup. We've taken him to the best trainers in the L.A. area and have come so far with him, but he just screws loose when people touching him and will, and will enforce his boundaries. Bro, I mean, you rescued a street dog in Vietnam and you put him on a fucking uh, aircraft early on in their life. Like, this dog's going to be a little fucked up probably. No matter how hard you try. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's definitely... Or the dog might have some trauma or some shit from early on. I don't think that's a genetic thing. That's a dog that was traumatized. I didn't say all dogs can be uh, across the board, no matter what their living experiences are, uh, be trained to be perfectly docile. The thing is, like, yeah, if you... For example, there's like bait dogs. You know what I mean? My friend had a bait dog, okay? That dog would fuck up any other dog. It was old as hell, but there's nothing you could do about it. It's a bait dog. You know what I mean? Like my friend rescued a fucking bait dog. Yeah, the dog was insane. It was a fucking bait dog. A bait dog is a dog that they use for bait in dog fighting rings. Like for dog fighting. But if you get a dog, if you get a dog like as a puppy, as long as it's not been like heavily traumatized or something, you should, you can easily socialize and train and, and do all of that good stuff. <sighs> Isn't that animal abuse? Yes, that is absolutely animal abuse. I'm not saying my friend was using the dog for bait dogs in their fighting ring. I'm saying that they rescued the dog from like, they, they were the ones who homed the dog after they rescued the dog. Um, but overall, overall though, if you have a dog, like these guys are breeding these dogs, you know what I mean? If you breed these dogs from, if you breed these dogs and you know the dogs is they're a puppy, it's going to be easy as fuck. But, to be fair, I don't know. You can train a dog to be violent, for sure. And you can train a dog to be um, docile, docile, nice, kind, socialized. A lot of people don't do it appropriately. But, I mean, of course, there's still going to be issues. Maybe some dogs are just fucked up. Humans are fucked up, too. Why can't dogs be fucked up? You know what I mean? I'm simply stating that it's not coming from a place of uh, like breed specific violence, I would say.
He was very laid back and he was very, very lovely. Does he need your permission to be nice to me? If he was on his own in a field and I just rocked up on my own, would he be guarding that field? Would he be going like, you are not coming in here? 100%. He'd be a lot more territorial and he'll be a lot more protective of his place if you were to come uninvited. Yeah. Whereas if I'm here, he knows that the situation is calm yes. and then he'll be calm. But yeah. as soon as you come uninvited, Mm -hmm. and it'll be a different story. So if somebody wanted one of these as a pet, could you have one in a little house or would you have to give them a good bit of land? I advise anyone that does have the breed to make sure you do a lot of exercise and don't overfeed them, especially if they're in a small house. If you overfeed them then, and they don't get the exercise, you'll notice later down the line that they'll get a lot of uh, problems. What's um, that, joint problems then? Mostly joint problems, yeah. You just gotta give it time with these yeah. dogs. They're not like your average dog that matures physically and mentally within a year or two. When he's about four years of age, that's when he'll hit full maturity, physically as well. Obviously good guard dogs, right? So if you were to go out and leave one in your house, would they look after the house? Yeah, for sure. But I also think they do make good pets as yes. well. So in my opinion, livestock guardians as a whole, not just Alibi, but all livestock guardians, one quality that I like about them a lot is with their pack, with their, with, with their family, they're extremely gentle because mm -hmm. I've had experience with other breeds too. Just because they're dominant, confident dogs, in my opinion, that's an advantage. Insecure dogs with a high prey drive with uh, small children and stuff could be an issue. Yeah. But they don't have that prey drive because they're no. bred to be around the livestock. No, I agree. And when you look back and you look at a lot of footage online, just generally of flock gardens, whether it's a Central Asian Shepherd or a Kangal, you often see them with families like kids climbing on top of them, sleeping with the dog, the dog's licking the child very very gentle and of course if you see them in with goats and, and sheep they're, they're equally just really really gentle and really really nurturing i feel like it's an instinctive like instinctive knowledge they have like a really ancient breed they they work and know things themselves rather than you having to teach them with other breeds does he like other male dogs or is that a bit of a problem something you have to sort of watch i feel like it depends on each dog itself, um, it depends on how you've socialised it when it was younger. Is it possible to make them social, I guess, if you really, really work yeah. at it? Definitely, yeah. So say, for instance, people have got cats or kittens or rabbits and things like that. Are they good with those because they have a lower prey drive? We actually have two kittens at yeah. home as well yeah. and the dogs are perfect with them. So raised with little things yeah. like that, they'll just nurture them and look after them. Yeah, like if they're, they're raised with them. Yeah. yeah but if, if they're not, not raised with them, then what would they, they might not like them. Yeah. Yeah. So when they're in their native habitat, they walk around with the sheep until they sense some wolves in the area. And what do they do? Do they run as a huge pack to see them off? Depends, isn't it? Or do yeah. they stick it's normally, with the sheep until the wolves... You'll have a couple wolves... that will run out. You'll also have maybe one, two that will stick with the pack just in case something else is going to approach you, just to protect them. It's my guess that most of the time the wolves, if there's too much trouble with there being too many dogs, the wolves will just go, won't they? They're intelligent. They'll just try to get yeah. out. Because it, the idea is to try and make it really difficult for the wolves, yeah. not to necessarily go and kill the wolves. Wolves are usually smart because they're pack orientated. So what tends to happen is a single lone wolf will come and distract the dogs for it to get chased. And obviously the, the wolves got a lot more stamina than majority of you know these livestock dogs. There'll be wolves waiting further down the road. So what, they want yeah. to try and take the dogs out? Yeah, that's yeah. what so they, tends to happen. The single They'll wolf almost, will come and yeah. draw the dog pack out and then the, the wolves will try and take the dogs out so they can go back and get the sheep. Is that yeah, the idea? Or it's even if, let's say, one large male wants to go out on a wolf hunt, that one wolf will lead him into the pack of wolves and mm. unfortunately then that's when the dog falls in for it. Um, but then there is some cases where that single wolf who does approach can't get away. Can't get away and then the pack of that's dogs. That's when you see the pack that's of dogs. Happens. Do you find them quite hard yeah, to train? Yeah, that's the disadvantage, their stubbornness. From what I've seen, it's males that are usually more stubborn than the females. Females usually stick to you more and pay a bit more attention to you. Yeah. <laughs> they will like to please you a lot more. Recall's the main thing. It's, it's not the best with livestock dogs. It's not dogs. the best. It's not, no. For training, I'd say different dogs have different things that could get their attention. Yeah. So livestock guardians usually have a high food drive. They've got a huge coat, which obviously means they're going to be molting everywhere. Where they come from, is it quite cold at night? It gets down to about minus 30, 40 degrees in the winter. And then in the summer, it can get up to up to maybe like 30, you said about 30 degrees. 40, so 30, it goes 40. the polar opposite and goes yeah. very, very hot. Yeah. So, so do they like being inside the house or do they prefer to lie outside? Outside. Outside. So yeah. you need to really give them an area they can cool off. What's the life expectancy of this breed? ranges so that's where it becomes like a debate about aboriginal dogs and more modern breeding 
obviously with more modern breeding, show breeding now, like with all other breeds, life expectancy can go down. But then when you look at some of the more Aboriginal dogs, because they're just healthier. Healthier because they're more naturally bred. They can have high life expectancy. I'd say for the Aboriginals, I'd average it anywhere from 13 to 16, I'd say. What? We know that um, dogs get their ears cropped in foreign countries to do. That is long as hell, bro. For a big ass dog. With, when they come into contact with wolves, wolves can tear off the ears and, <laughs> and they can just grab onto the dog. If you had one of these versus a wolf one on one, which one's going to be better? And you got to be truthful here. It depends on the, on the dog and on the wolf. Yeah. A strength of a livestock guardian, even with the same breed, there's a huge range. Mm. And it's the same story with the wolf. There's a huge range in size and strength. If you put him in front of a wolf, it's not going to match out for me. The dog needs to be experienced yes. as well from a proper working yeah, field. Yeah, and also it's, some of them, are, it's, it's mental drive. It, yeah. It's not always size. It's workability <laughs> and mental yeah. drive. I really... Are we finding Kai another roommate? Fuck no. Are you kidding me? I just got done training this demon. Really like this breed a lot. In fact, one of my favorite breeds to date. As despite their fierce reputation, they are total family dogs. And you can see what gentle giants they are in the house with kids and family. I think that dogs like this can get along with whoever. How different are big dog owners versus small dog owners? I mean, I don't know. But by and large, I think like big dog owners know that their dogs are going to be terrifying to the average person. So they work extra hard to ensure that like their dogs are better trained, I think, so that they don't get. Um, yeah, they just ensure that their dogs are better trained so they don't get whatever like. Whatever you choose, but it needs to be introduced. Whereas little to dog owners, I feel like treat their dogs like cats a little bit. And just kind of let them loose, let them fly, which is not good. Them early on and taught to them to accept. Many are same sex aggressive, so cannot live with a similar dominant sex and breed. But I'm sure we'd get on very well with other animals and dogs of no threat to them, as long as socialized to them very well and early on. Their independent streak means that they might be stubborn as they have been bred to be independent and take decisions on their own. So please take this into consideration if you are after an obedient breed. As for wolf killer, well... On to the shelter, big dog people do not necessarily train their dogs. Little dog owners are just more picky with that kind of dog they want. Wait, what? I mean, you're talking about a shelter, so... We've spoken about this many times before on Animal Watch. A pack of these on one wolf alone can probably kill a wolf, but the wild and ruthless wolf would not hesitate to take one of these dogs out if they were outnumbered. Just remember that. I do think that, I mean, uh, the problem is the reason why you guys probably think like big dog owners are overrepresented in like being bad dog owners is because you're more likely to like pay attention, I think. Like when a little chihuahua is being an annoying little shit, you're like, yeah, whatever. But if you have a non-trained big dog, then it's a problem. You know what I mean? If you have a big ass dog behaving like a chihuahua. Apart from that, I could have snuggled both Lucky and Sargon until the cows came home literally under their watchful eye so if um anybody wants to find out about um more about this dog what are your websites that they can find you on I'll let you have so we've got an instagram and a facebook page sabaski kennels you can and i'll write us. that underneath so you can yeah a chihuahua is not killing a toddler if behave poorly lol i mean yeah but they can still do a lot they can rack up a lot of damage find him and he's uh Verivar kennels, yeah, um, kennels yeah. and yeah. we're just um basically showcasing what the true livestock guardian yes. is i Ooh, really enjoyed finger. meeting you guys today and if you enjoyed this episode then give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner and tune in every week where i'll be bringing you more episodes on dogs wolves animal rescue and conservation bye for now
corrupt cops realized they destroyed their career. Wow. All right, I'm done, though. Uh, actually, I'm actually done. I'm tired. Nice little eight hour and 30 minute. Trump just made the most incredible speech ever. So many memes. I'll look at it tomorrow. Chat? What the fuck their own is that? way that they are now becoming very popular as That's pets weird. across the world. That's claws weird. Claws and oh. paws like rodent or bat feet what? and no undercoat. So they can be stroked in both directions just like a dog can. In fact, many owners claim that these cats also possess dog-like qualities in the world. That's crazy. Firam was fire today. Thank you. I agree. I thought it was one of the best episodes, you know, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, we couldn't do a, a, a premium, a premium episode. Well, yeah. Stream Madden with LeBron. Yeah, I should. I should do that. How many hours do you sleep? Eight. I don't really do much outside of working out and streaming, so I get to I get to stream for I get to sleep for like eight hours. 